My friend told me today, she say, uh, you know, if you don't got no haters, that mean you ain't doing something right. right. If you don't got no haters, that mean you ain't doing something right. And I want all the smoke, right? I noticed they've been taking down my It's Not Regular signs from the light poles, but they ain't been touching the real cheap divorce signs. They leave those up, right? <laughs> They've been taking down my it's not regular signs from the light poles, but they don't touch the $6,000 tax advance signs. And uh, we buy house of a cash. They leave those up, right? They've been t like, they take down my it's not regular signs from in front of the liquor store. Meanwhile, they just leave the trash right in front of the liquor store and don't pick that up. That's too much to ask, right? These people have been taking down. They've been taking down my it's not regular signs from in front of the currency exchange. Meanwhile, inside the currency exchange, they got the ink pen shackled down to the table and three-inch bulletproof glass up everywhere, right? And I know I've been looking on Facebook. I got so many haters, man. I've been looking at the comments. I might as well have a premium membership on Reddit. I've been getting so many haters. But look, don't nobody care about the bulletproof glass. All they've been saying, this is what they've been saying. Hey, uh, Jamal, um, you know, uh, they don't mean nothing by shackling the ink pens to the table. They're just trying to make sure people don't steal their ink pens. And this is their biggest one they've been saying in the comments. They've been saying, they shackle the ink pens on the table on the north side, too. Right? They do it on the north side too, Jamal. This is just not happening on the south side, man. Quit being sensitive, right? They ain't mean nothing by putting up the bulletproof glass windows, Jamal. They just trying to protect their money. They got bulletproof glass windows on the north side too? Man, quit being sensitive. This ain't happening on the south side, Jamal. I don't know if this is no injustice. Look, man, I heard that when you walk into Aldi, they check your link card to make sure you got $100 on it before you can shop. Is that true? Because I know when you walk out of... Hey, I, I, listen, no, no, exactly. I know when you walk out of Walmart, they check your receipt to make sure you ain't steal that ice, right? It's, it's, it's so many levels of pain and indignity. It's like, there's a climate, there's a culture of disrespect in Chicago, man. They're treating black and brown people like we don't get, like they, we don't get the benefit of the doubt. These people took down my it's not regular signs in front of the funeral home. Meanwhile, on the funeral home window, they got a Louis Vuitton casket. Somebody passed by, they say, Ma, I want to get buried in that casket. Hey, no, Ma, I want to get buried in the Gucci one. When they coming out with the Fendi casket? Look, I talked to a kid. I said, hey, man, I said, hey, Marquez, I said, what you do for the weekend? He said, Jamal, man, I had a good time, man. I had a great time. I got to eat some good food. I got to dance a little bit. I saw some of my family. I said, well, I said man, what y'all go to the club? He said, oh, no, I just went to Leaks on 79th. This is the best funeral I've ever been to. The best funeral he ever been to. This kid was in ninth grade and been to 15 funerals. We celebrate black death. We've turned homegoing traditions into these elaborate affairs where people get G'd up, right? That's not regular, man. It's not regular. Look, I talked to kids. I talked to a kid. He said, he say, Jamal, I don't put a lock on my iPhone. I said, why not? He said, just in case I get killed, I want the police to know how to contact my people. This, how to, he wasn't thinking about his future. He wasn't thinking about where he's going to be in five years. He said, if I get killed, I want the police to know how to contact my people. That's not regular. Something's wrong in Chicago, y'all. Something's wrong, terribly wrong. On some sides of the city, the quality of life, the health, and the safety is worse than in third world countries. Man, we got to start challenging these things, raising awareness, and calling out these injustices. They're going to keep on taking advantage of us. They want people to stay asleep behind the wheel. I'm not shot. Listen, when you start, beware, 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 be very wary. Once you start calling out these people and these injustices, they start challenging you back, right? You got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? And this is the thing. It don't just be the institutions that be coming after you. It be your own people. It be your own people that get you. Listen, people that live in poor neighborhoods, I feel like they're more conservative than people that's in rich neighborhoods because they don't want to change. they rather deal with the devil they know. You talking about my currency exchange? Or uh, you talking about the good man at the liquor store down the street who give me a free cup of ice with my Hennessy? Oh, man, I you talking about shutting down the currency? I, I don't know if I can rock with you on that one, Jamal. They love me when I'm shoveling snow for seniors. They love me when I'm hanging holiday lights on King Drive. When I start challenging the integrity of these, these non-banks in the community, they say, oh, man, I, you talking about shutting down the currency exchange? You're getting the good black people in the neighborhood riled up. Man, stay in your lane. That's how I feel like they say, stay in your lane. Go back to shoveling the snow, Jamal. That's how they treat me. And I want to say, though, listen, my book was never about shutting down the currency exchange, right? It wasn't. 
the purpose of this campaign was to create a robust discussion about whether there exists a healthy or unhealthy relationship with the currency exchange, right? My hope is that we can do our best to hear each other, right? I want y'all to hear from both sides of the bulletproof glass windows that y'all love, right? I want people to hear from the, the people they call underbanked, underprivileged, the under-resourced. I want you to hear from them people. And I also want us to learn from the ground level business owners that might be frustrated or agitated because maybe somebody robbed them. Maybe that's why they got the glass up. Who knows? But like through these conversations, I want us to create a, a space for social change. This is what this is, a space for social change. And ultimately, I want us to have a culture of respect and not disrespect. So my campaign is not about shutting down the currency exchange. This is about education, right? It's about financial literacy. It's about making institutions more equitable. I'm trying to talk like the education reform people talk. Make it more equitable, right? <laughs> I mean, you talk to the education, they got a word for everything. You say, let's get, let's, let's have a, where's the, what's the center? What's, what's, the, what's the synergy opportunities? No, seriously, you asking for some money, they say, how much? They say, let's meet each other downstream. You're like, what the hell? Like, what, somebody asked me the other day, what are your in Thrive points? <laughs> what the hell are you talking? Listen, man, I think there's space in Chatham for the currency exchange, and I think there's space for the conventional banks. But first, I want y'all to understand how much your money actually costs. And I'm trying to understand how the currency exchange approaches the neighborhood. Do they put up bulletproof glass windows wherever they go? Does the thickness of the glass change between the north side and the south side? Why are they investing in that? Hey, you, you charge me 3.5% on my money, and you got a bulletproof glass. Who really being robbed? That's financial robbery, right? As I was driving through Chatham the other day on the first of the month, right, I passed by the currency exchange. The line was out the door and down the block, way longer than the Garris popcorn line, just out the block, right? <laughs> People was probably cashing their first paycheck of the year, their first benefit check of the year. People look just like me and you, right? They probably behind on their bills, you know? Maybe I'm the only person behind on my bills in this month, right? But okay, I'm saying people that got the best credit, people, they probably upside down on their car note, but they still deserve better. They deserve better and they deserve to be treated with dignity. Of the 450 some community currency exchanges in the state of Illinois, the vast majority are located in low to moderate income communities. In communities like Chatham, there's way more currency exchanges than conventional banks, right? And some communities got like 10 currency exchanges and no banks. Because I talked to a kid in North Lawndale, I said, hey, what's the job at a bank? He ain't know, he never been to a bank. Why? Why are there so many community currency exchanges in low to moderate income communities, specifically communities of color, right? Now, I realize the choice between the currency exchange and the bank ain't simple. Because if you live in, if your neighborhood is a bank desert, that's what they say, the bank deserts, you ain't even got a choice. Searching for a bank is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Look, and I'm not a hater either, y'all also realize there's a myriad of legitimate reasons why you go to the currency exchange. Because some people don't even trust banks, right? The currency exchange is open 24 hours, it's convenient, right? Some people can't afford to open a checking account. Some people can't afford to maintain the minimum balance requirements of a checking account. Sometimes it takes way too long for the bank to clear your check. Them fees, those check fees and those overdraft fees is crazy. They're not transparent either. Some people have been denied access to the bank because of their prior bad banking experience. I see that too. Look, how y'all doing? Come on in, come on in. Come on in, how y'all doing? Come on in. Come on in. So some people have been denied access because of their prior bad banking experience. Look, I'm not, I'm not um, y'all good? Y'all good? You straight? Um, yeah, we out of chairs. It's a good thing, though, know, man. I speak in this library, ain't nobody show up. This is a great thing. We got some chairs right up here up front. Look, y'all. Look, look. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to tell y'all how to spend y'all money, right? I'm not trying to judge nobody's actions, right? All I'm trying to tell y'all is that. After researching these sobering statistics of the traditional versus the non-traditional financial services market, I want y'all to stay woke. I want, that's what they say, stay woke. I want y'all to be conscious of not only how, but where you conduct your financial business, right? With the eye, if you got an eye towards cost savings, if y'all really trying to save money, y'all should be conducting business where it's most beneficial to you, right? I talked to a lady, she say, she say her, her paycheck hit the bank at midnight. 
And she said a bill hit the bank at midnight. Do you know the bank took out the bill first? Charged her $37 on her overdraft fee. That's a deal breaker for her. She only go to the currency exchange now. I talked to a kid, he's he 25 years old. Once he get paid, he cashes his check. He go to the currency exchange, he cashes his check for a fee. He jump on a bus, go to Walmart on 83rd. He uploads the money to a prepaid card for another fee. He pays some of his bills, he spends the rest, then he broke for the next 13 days. He get paid again, goes back to the currency exchange, cashes his check for a fee. Jumps on a bus, go to Walmart on 83rd, uploads the money to a prepaid card for another fee, pays off some of his bills, he spends the rest and he broke the next 13 days. Go back, he's been doing this for 10 years. 10 years, he, I said, do you save any money? He said he saved his money in the mattress. He said he put money in his suitcase, he learned this from his pops. Yo, listen, according to the Illinois State Comptroller, on average, people spending $40,000 in fees over the course of a lifetime at the currency exchange. That's 40,000, you can't give me a pen for $40,000? Man, if you're going to put up the bulletproof glass, at least has a decency to mop. Mop out front. Turn on the air conditioner when I come. Give me a pen. Put your logo on an ink pen and give it to me. Do something. I ain't trying to tell y'all how to spend y'all money. I'm just telling you. Over the long haul, these fees at these currency exchanges are double, if not triple, of these traditional financial institutions that offer the equivalent services. That's a fact. So instead of cashing y'all income tax check at the currency exchange, I'm encouraging y'all, open up a bank account at Seaway. I'm gonna put $25 in the accounts for you. We're gonna do that up the first 250 people that open their accounts. We're gonna work with, thank you, thank you. I ain't got that kind of money, but I'm gonna do that for y'all. I'm gonna be at the currency exchange too, I'm gonna be broke. <laughs> but again, y'all, it's about financial literacy. It's not regular, that's what my book is called, It's Not Regular, y'all. It's not regular, kids got a German Shepherds and sniffing kids on 79th Street when they get on the train. It's not regular that, you know, helicopters landing on top of people's houses at night, right? It's not regular we got to order our food through bulletproof glass windows, right? If people just order their food through a bulletproof glass window, you, you know, you'd be traumatized you got to do that every day. It's not regular to walk inside the Walgreens, all the cough syrup is locked up. It ain't, it's not regular all the billboards in the community say cheap divorces and $6,000 tax advances. That's crazy, man. It's, it's not regular as holding cells in the basement of a funeral home. You got paddy wagons parked outside of the front of the high schools. That's not regular, y'all. Ain't no toilet paper, no paper towels in the bathroom. Kids are expected to learn in filth. You got to take your belt off and your shoes off to go through a metal detector to get in. That's not regular. We've just normalized these things like they're regular, y'all. So it's time to wake up, call out these injustices. And uh, that's what we're doing today, man. This is all about education. So uh, I want to definitely grab a book for y'all get out of here. We're going to hear from one more speaker today. This is... Daryl, this, uh, this dude came last minute, man, last minute. And he, uh, we gonna let him slide because he used to play for the Packers. We ain't gonna talk about that, though. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna let him slide on that one. We gonna let him slide on that one. But, hey, y'all, y'all give it up for Daryl Newell, president of Seaway. <laughs>